At the end of the previous official film, Octopussy, the end credits proclaim James Bond will return in From a View to a Kill. From a View to a Kill is the name of the first short story found in the book For Your Eyes Only, and involves Bond pretending to be a dispatch rider to investigate the murder of a previous dispatcher. Eventually, the title of the film was shortened to A View to a Kill, and in the end, the movie has nothing to do with the story at all, making it a uniquely original story, something that hasn't happened too often in the series. In an early version of the script, it was suggested that the film's villain would be a motorcycle assassin, like in the story, but it never happened. Some fans have pointed out that the plot in this film is pretty similar to Goldfinger, something I never really thought about when I saw the film, but now that I look back, I guess they are pretty similar. It's also the last film that Roger Moore played Bond in, which is probably a good thing, as he turned 57 while filming this movie. It's also the last film that Lois Maxwell appeared as Miss Moneypenny. She had played the same role in every official film since Dr. No, at the same time making her the actress to appear in the most 007 movies playing the same character, as Desmond Llewellyn's character of Q had not appeared in Live and Let Die. Anyway, the story begins with Bond finding the corpse of 003 and recovering a stolen microchip, which turns out to be the same sort made by Zorn Industries. The head of the company, Max Zorn, is the, fil- is the main villain of the movie, played by Christopher Walken, who always does a great bad guy. Zorn has to be one of the most evil villains ever to appear in a Bond movie. Not only is he a total asshole, but he has no problems in betraying his own loyal henchmen. In one memorable scene, he turns a machine gun on his own guys and laughs about it, What a prick. Zorin's main henchman is the strong woman Mayday, played by Grace Jones. Now, that seems like a pretty weird choice, but Mayday is a pretty weird character, so it definitely fits. Anyway, Bond goes off to investigate Zorin Industries, but winds up in a speedboat chase through Paris with Mayday. Later, he turns up at Zorin's estate, posing as someone interested in buying horses. He stays there for a while, but eventually finds... Zorn finds out who he is, and he kills his companion, Sir Godfrey Tibet, played by Patrick McNee, and attempts to kill Bond. This is after Bond had discovered how Zorn cheats at horse racing, which at first seems to be what Zorn is into, but it turns out the villain has something much worse planned. In a meeting on his airship that Bond spies on, Zorn reveals his plans to blow up the San Andreas Fault, destroying Silicon Valley, and giving himself a monopoly in the microchip industry. When one of his backers balks at this, Zorn drops him out of the airship. I guess that's a lot like when Goldfinger had the guy crushed in his car. There's also a suggestion that Zorn is absolutely nuts because of experiments performed on him in the past by the KGB during the war. Well, anyway, Bond infiltrates Zorn's mine and tries to stop the bomb, but Zorn sets off some explosives that traps both Bond and Mayday, who gets really pissed off because she was loyal to Zorn, and, you know, she thought he loved her. Mayday winds up helping Bond stop the bomb, but she gets blown up in the process. Bond pursues Zorin, and the two wind up having to fight on top of the Golden Gate Bridge, with Zorin attacking him with a damned axe. This just shows how nuts the guy is. He's more concerned with attacking Bond with an axe than using the axe to free his ship, which got tangled up in the bridge's cables and escaping. Bond beats the crap out of him, and he falls into the bay. The movie is reasonably exciting, not overly silly, and has a decent plot. Now, I realize that they borrowed heavily from Goldfinger, but that had to be pointed out to me anyway. I did enjoy the film when I first saw it. As I already mentioned, Roger Moore was too old to play Bond, and it was kind of creepy to see him in the sex scenes, especially in this one when he set the Bond record for ass-getting and bedded four different women in the film, including Mayday, which is just weird. A lot of people severely dislike A View to a Kill, but I think they just need to get the stick out of their ass. It's certainly not among the greats, such as From Russia with Love and The Spy Who Loved Me, but it's also not as sucky as The Man with the Golden Gun or Moonraker. I'd have to say that once you get past Roger Moore's advanced age, Grace Jones, and the similarities to Goldfinger, it is possible to enjoy this film. It may be heavily flawed, but damn it, it's fun. It also has damn good music, with an update to some of my favorite Bond tunes from On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and a great theme song by Duran Duran. It's not one of the best, but it's worth a look. And to put things in perspective, I'm going to give it a rating that's above average, a 6 out of a possible 10.